Logger John, brought to you by Big J's Beans, the logger's choice. They're even good cold. Mmm. Big John. Big John. Big bad Hey folks, it's uh, Logger John here, and it's a beautiful day in eastern Ontario. And today we're going to do, do a review of my MS261 Pro. I've had the saw now for about three months. I bought the saw at the end of January, and now it's the first of May. So I've basically been using the saw for about three months now, and I thought I would go over a bit of what I like about the saw and what I don't like about the saw. The overall saw I'm really happy with uh, for the most part. Uh, it cuts really well. It's lightweight. It has a lot of power. Uh, it's 50cc. It's a pro model saw so it has a little few more added features than a regular homeowner saw. So I thought first we'd go over some of the things I like about the saw. So, some of the things I like about the saw is that it's nice and sleek and it fits my hands really well. It just feels really good. To, um, it's hard to describe. Um, it just has a nice weight to it. It's not very bulky. Like some saws are bulky. This one is nice and sleek. I really like that about it. Um, and, the, and the weight to power ratio is, uh, or the power to weight ratio I should say, is fantastic. Um, at first, I didn't really think too much of this cover here. Uh, it's all one piece. I wasn't sure about that when I first got it, but uh, I seem to like it now. Um, you got to use your wrench take off the cover you just turn these screws about a half a turn or a quarter of a turn it pops off that gives you access to your filter which just comes off really easy it's really easy to clean gives you access to your spark plug and it's not so bad I kind of thought it was a pain in the butt at first you had to take these off. You use your wrench, but it, it comes off pretty fast, so it's no big deal. The old saws, I don't know if you remember much about steel chain saws, but my old the ones I have, well any of the older saws, this was a two-piece. The back part was separate from the front and you just basically turned a knob back here. Or unscrewed it, it would pull it off, it'd give you access to your air filter, and then you had to use your wrench and take off the top, and that gave you access to your spark plug. Now that with the one piece, you have access to that pretty easy. So I kind of like that about it now. And the switch, it's a different kind of switch than the old saws. This one here, you go down to choke it, you start it, Let's it warm, let it warm up for a few seconds, and then you, as soon as you touch the throttle, it pops back up to the run mode. And then when you want to shut it off, you just shut it off, push it up, it shuts off. As soon as you let go, it goes back down to the run mode again. So it's all ready to start again. You don't have to uh, worry about the button in, or the worry about this anymore. It's all ready to start. On the old saws, you had to choke them. Start them, let it run for a second, throttle up, um, or take the, actually you had to take it off, the, the choke, manually. And then it was in the run mode, and then you turned it off, and then when you went to use it again, you had to turn it back on. So I kind of like that. That's kind of neat. Um, I like these nuts that are holding on the chain, or the, yeah, the, or the bar I should say. They're holding this cover on and then they hold on the bar. On the old saws, I don't know how many of you guys lost lost these. I've lost a few in my life. These ones, you can 
they come off, but they don't come off all the way. I'm not really sure the, what you call these kind of nuts and bolts, but they only come off part way and then it comes off, so you'll never lose these, which is kind of cool. Okay, well that's, um, that's what I really like about the saw. Um, like I say, it cuts really nice. And it just, it just, it's a, it's a really nice handling saw. Um, out of all the saws I've used in my life, this is probably the best handling saw and the most powerful for the weight of it. Um, now, some of the things I'm not really fussy about on this saw are these caps, the oil cap and the gas cap. Um, Still came out with these a few years back on all their saws. What you basically do, you pull up the black, it's, it's basically like a two piece thing. You pull up the black part, you use that to turn, it comes off, back on. This uh, gas one's getting stiff for some reason. Then you snap it back down when you're, when you're done. Same with the oil one. Now the oil one, for the last couple weeks, it's been really giving me trouble trying to get it back on. Uh, I didn't know what was wrong with it. Um, the gas one worked works fine, but this one, uh, you couldn't get it on. You'd like you spend five or ten minutes trying to get the cap back on. You just, but I think I figured it out. So inside the cap, when you take it off, there's like a little strap that holds it in there so you don't lose your gas cap or your oil cap. Well, on the, it's, it's, it's attached to the side, if you look down in there. So on this one, it seems to, I think it's supposed to swivel up here, maybe inside that. But on the oil one, I noticed, it wasn't letting it turn on. The, the little strap was keeping it from, um, going on right so I ended up I took the strap right off and it seems uh, the oil cap seems to go on much better now um, I just don't like them at all my other saw had them on it I didn't like them then and I still don't like them I'd ra rather have the old caps where you use your wrench to take them off uh, the dealer or the steel company um, are promoting these because they say you don't need a wrench to uh, when you run out of fuel you can just you don't need the wrench to take them off right so but me personally when I run out of gas in the woods um, if I'm cutting out cutting and cutting firewood I don't normally uh, carry the gas around with me in the woods I usually leave it at the truck or at the tractor I take the saw back to the truck say on the tailgate to uh, fuel up and oil up and I already have my wrench there so it's not like a big deal on the old caps just to take them off uh, I don't know how many people carry their saw around or their gas around with them to every tree they cut down in case they run out of gas so I don't really think that's a legitimate uh, reason to do that like you already have your wrench with you right and uh, I always leave my fuel, like I say, in the truck or at the tractor with my wrench. Um, another thing, I always carry a brush around with me so I can brush off before I fuel up, before I put oil in. I clean all the sawdust off. And on the, on the oil one, I don't know if you can see really well, but on the oil one, there's like a little ridge right here. It's kind of protects the cap from you know getting hit with wood or whatever. Well, there's hardly any space in between that cap and that, and it always fills up with dirt. And even with a brush, it's really hard to get that out of there. Because I really don't know how many people carry an air compressor around with them in the bush. And even when you clean it off, it's 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 almost impossible. I wish they would have made this a little bit more room here for the cap. It's uh, it's a little tricky to clean it out. And another thing, even when you do clean them out, I find, even when you clean them all nice around, 
and you open it up to put fuel in, there's always dirt in sawdust, just like on the inside of this. It seems like dirt and debris and sawdust gets, for some reason, that gets behind this. And even with you, even when you brush it off, like there's still a little bit of dirt right there. That's just going to get in your fuel. It's going to get in your oil. On the old caps, you didn't have that problem. Like they fit on tight. You didn't have like these are totally different. The old cap would basically fit on top, and you didn't have any way for dirt to get in. So dirt is still getting underneath that cap. I just wish they would go back to the old caps. Uh, there's been quite a few complaints online I've been reading about them. People don't really like them. Um, they are convenient in the sense that you know you don't, you know, they come off and on without a wrench. But like I say, I I have my wrench with me anyway. It's no big deal. Just to turn it, it takes a few seconds. And uh, I guess you can get apparently you can get retrofits for the old caps for these. I, I haven't looked into it yet. Uh, I might. Um, that's one of the things I don't like about it are the caps. Uh, Another thing I don't like about it, for some reason I find the saw really thirsty. It seems to like it's gas. I'm not sure why. I did check online and there's other complaints of people saying the same thing. It's weird. Uh, I had a few people say their saw is fine and a couple other guys said their saw is hard on gas. Um, so it must, be a, it must be something about that. I'm not sure. I did ask the dealership. They kind of said maybe the saw is not wore in, it was really cold out, so maybe it uses more gas. Personally, I think that's a bunch of baloney. If other people are having the same issue, um, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, that's one of the complaints I have. So right now we have, I don't like these, it's, it's a little bit hard on gas. Um, there's another thing I want to show you. I'll just have to take this back off. Another thing I do like too is the compression button here. It makes it easier to start. So basically when you go to start you push that down. It makes it easy to start. Without that it's it doesn't yeah, it doesn't you know it's really hard to pull sometimes. So you got to remember to use your compression switch. Some people are not using them and they're breaking their pull cords and stuff. So I don't know why you wouldn't use it, but anyways, I'm going to show you this little thing here. It's called a heat shutter. You use your wrench to take it out. It's kind of funny. They tell you that you don't need your wrench for the oil and gas, but you need your wrench to take the cover off. You need your wrench to get this out. This is a heat shutter. I don't know if you can see it. One side is open, one side is solid. Um, right now it's on summer mode. I switched it back a week or two ago when the warm weather came. So basically what it does is, if you have it on the winter mode, hard to see maybe, uh, the heat from the motor goes into where the carburetor is and it helps heat up the carburetor, warms it up faster in the cold mornings. And then in the summer you turn it around so you don't really need the heat going into your carburetor. That's kind of a neat thing. Um, there's a few people online that I talked about, that, or they were talking about this, they didn't even know about this on their saw. Which is kind of funny, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. So I'm going to put it back in there, just snaps in. I, I'm assuming it's a pretty neat idea. I'm, I don't think it's some kind of gimmick, hopefully, but uh, so that's that. It's called a heat shutter. And uh, yeah, another thing I like, I'm going to put the cover back on. Now, I think you only find what I'm going to talk about on, uh, on pro model saws. I don't know if it's on homeowner saws. And uh, I'll just get this on. I'm just wondering how long these things are going to last, these little snap screws. Hopefully they last for, you know, forever. But uh, anyways, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to turn the saw around. Right here is a sight line. 
and like I said, I don't know if it's available on the homeowner's saws, but it's on the pro saws. My 036 has it, and my other saws that I had before have it. It's a sight line, so basically when you're cutting down a tree, you're going to notch it. You can line that line up where you want the tree to fall, right? And you make your notch, you cut in, you keep it, you know, you look at where that line is. If you want to go that way, you make your notch. It basically helps you line up where your notch is going to be. It's kind of cool. So the last thing I really want to talk about is not really the saw itself as much as uh, the dealership where I bought the saw. Um, it's a local dealership in the small town near my place. Uh, I've bought, I've never bought a new saw there before. I buy all my chains there, my oil, my wedges, all that kind of stuff. And I never, this is the first saw, new saw I bought there. It was on sale in January. So basically they know me, well the one guy knows me uh, when I go in. So he knows that I cut firewood and I cut logs and stuff. So basically the day I bought it, there was nobody in the store. I went in, I looked at it, I said I would take it. Great. Paid for it. I had to buy comes with a one-year warranty and if you buy their oil um, it, it extends the warranty by one year uh, which is kind of funny a big dealership or a big company like still you think they would offer at least a five-year warranty I know echo does the other chainsaw company they have a five-year consumer warranty I think still could do that with their saws uh, especially the pro models but anyways, there's a two-year warranty now since I bought the oil. And uh, I basically walked out with the saw. He didn't uh, say, he didn't go over the saw with me. I guess he assumed I knew how to run a saw, which is fine. I understand that. But I just wonder how many people go in there, never used a saw before, and they buy a saw, they walk out without any instructions or anything. Um, I brought the saw home. And uh, I didn't use it for a while, and I got the book with it. And I'm not usually one to read the book too much, you know, because I know how to use a saw, right? So what? Do you, I mean, what are they going to teach you? But one day I was bored, and I started flipping through the book, and that's how I discovered the heat shutter. Uh, he didn't know about that, or he didn't tell me about that, and he didn't know about that. So I'm going through the. Uh, I put on my old uh, shop glasses here. Have a look at those. They've been stepped on, ran over, sat on. I just leave them in my shop. I don't even know where I got them. I can hardly see out of them. But anyways. So I'm going through this book and I find out about the heat shutter. And uh, he didn't tell me about that. And then the switch. The new, swangle, the new uh, fangled switch here. A lot different than the old saws. Well, a bit different. You don't need, you know, I went over that already. But he didn't tell me how to anything about that. Uh, I guess that's why they make a manual. You're supposed to read it. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think he would have took the time to go over some things. But uh, I had it in uh, after I started using it. I found it a little bit hard on fuel, so... I went in to inquire about that and they basically told me whatever and keep using it and it needs to wear in more and then I asked him about the heat shutter. He did not know about the heat shutter. Um, I find that a little strange why you wouldn't know about that. Uh, you're a still dealer, you're selling these saws. So they didn't know about that. And I started reading the book here one day, and it says calibrating the chainsaw. So it has a, all these different steps here, how to calibrate the chainsaw. Um, you got to turn it off, turn it on, run it for 30 to 60 seconds at full speed. Um, there's all these, like it's really complicated instructions. So calibrating the chainsaw, um, I'll read a little bit of it, I guess. Uh, engage the chain brake, start the engine with depressing the trigger. The engine runs and the master control lever remains in the, in the on position. 
Allow engine to run for 30 to 60 seconds without depressing the throttle trigger. Um, warm up the engine. It says if the trigger is released before the chainsaw has been fully calibrated, calibration will be aborted. Calibration has to be started again from the beginning. Uh, and it says go on, blah, blah, blah. If the trigger is not fully depressed during calibration, the chainsaw may be it may not adjust correctly. The chainsaw may be damaged. And then it goes on to say, do it again. This doesn't work. Take the saw to the dealer. And I, I start looking at this and I'm like, this is before I even use the saw. I never even had it started. So I'm thinking, am I supposed to be doing this? Like calibrating the uh, chainsaw? Because... Uh, I don't know, they didn't tell me anything about this. So I'm kind of freaking out, right? So I called them and they basically didn't know anything about it. They basically said, don't worry about it, it's probably done at the factory. Uh, they'll look into it and uh, get back to me. And then they, I went in there a couple days later because they hadn't got back to me. Asked them about it. They said it should be, the saw is good to go. Should be okay. Basically, they didn't really know about this. Maybe they, like when the guys are sitting there all day doing nothing, maybe they should read the go over the owner's manual of some of the stuff they sell. So then they know what they're talking about when they go to sell it. Um, so I did run the saw. I didn't do this. The saw runs fine. Um, I went online to try to find some stuff out, couldn't really find too much. Uh, I guess maybe I should have called the uh, still, Hill, still headquarters. I still might and find out what's going on and find out why it's a little bit thirsty. But I just, that's, that's my biggest beef with anything, it's not really with the saw. I have a few little things, you know, like I said, but it's the dealership, I mean these people have a still, still right here. They have a sign hanging out the shop. We're still a dealership. Well, I don't know. I find it really weird to be selling stuff and you don't really know too much about it. Uh, like, leave it up to the person to find out. Um, you know, the heat shutter. That's really strange. I find they didn't know about that. Well, at least the guy I was talking to didn't know about it. I shouldn't say everybody in there didn't know about it, but the one guy, not the guy that sold me the saw, but the other, there was another guy, he didn't know about it, and they didn't know about the calibration, they are going to look into it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's my beef really, I mean, uh, other than that, I like the saw, uh, unfortunately, I my next, uh, I probably won't be cutting any wood now for a while. My wood cutting season's coming to an end. It's the first of May. Um, I usually just cut wood from, um, you know, first of November to uh, May, which is now. And this, I probably won't use this saw until the fall again, so I won't be able to do another review for a while. But, uh, Overall, I really like the saw. Um, if you're out there, if anybody's out there, if you're listening still, the steel headquarters, change these back to the old caps, and uh, yeah, that would be the biggest thing. Change those back. That's my. That's what I don't like about them. I can just see these things breaking. You know, they're pretty tough, I guess, but I can just see. You know, I don't know. Hopefully they last. I mean, all the saws have them. I don't know. Anyways, like the saw. Not so happy with the dealership. Um, you know, basically should have, especially when he wasn't busy that day when I was in there. It was in the middle, of, it was the end of January. Nobody was around. He should have just went over, at least go over the starting switch on me, on it. You know, tell me about it. And you know, maybe know about a few other things, but no. Nope. Basically, uh, here's your saw, uh, pay us, and 
get out of her store. <laughs> so that's my uh, that's my beef with the dealerships. Now I don't know if you guys whether it's a chainsaw dealership or a tractor dealership or wherever any of you guys deal with. I don't know if it's the same way at your where you're from, but I don't know what happened to customer service. It seems to be gone for most places. Um, yeah, just let me just tell me, just let me know uh, in your comments if you've gone through the same thing. Like, do you have it where you bought your tractor? Do they bend over backwards to help you answer your questions and fix stuff, or are they just like? you know, beat around the bush and, you know, don't, don't want to help or anything, so let me know. And, uh, what else? Yeah, just let me know what, what your dealership's like. Like, uh, you know, you spend, you know, a lot of money on a chainsaw or a tractor or a lawn tractor or whatever you're buying, piece of equipment, um, you know, your hard-earned money. These people, these dealerships should be bending over backwards to, with any, you know, to help you with any of your concerns or your problems. And, uh, I mean, if I worked at this dealership, but it's just the way I am, uh, I do work in the service, uh, public service industry. Sometimes you got to deal with public a lot. And, uh, you know, the customer's always right kind of thing. And, always try to help out the customer as much as we can like I say if I worked here you know if it wasn't busy I would go over you know I don't give a crap if the guy if the customer knows how to use a chainsaw I would just go over some things with him like it's a new saw with some new things on it and not to take the time to do that is uh, is not right so uh, yeah just let me know what your dealerships are like. I don't know if you guys can hear that noise. Can you hear it? It's like a buzzing noise. You're probably wondering what that is. It clicked on during the video, I think. It's my outdoor furnace just outside the door here. So the damper, the solenoid kicked open, the, so the damper opened. So that's what that buzzing noise is. It's not uh, black flies, if that's what you're thinking. Although, we haven't had any black flies. Uh, oh, it just clicked off. Did you hear it? The damper just shut. Now it's quiet. Uh, the black flies, the cold, it's been really cold. It's supposed to be really cold tonight. Well, like minus two or wind chill at minus five. And then maybe it's, this is uh, Tuesday night. So I think third or Friday and Saturday they're saying flurries and a high of six and cold at night. So maybe that will kill off the black flies. We haven't. I, th I saw a few black flies, maybe two or three last night when I was outside doing some yard work. It was just too chilly. So ha ha on the black flies. I remember my dad telling me one time, and I remember it a couple times too. When the black flies came out around this. They're usually out by now. Uh, I mean, it's the first of May. They're usually usually out in April, like the end of April here, anyway. But he said one year it got really, really cold after the black flies came out, and there wasn't any more black flies. It must have just frozen them off, I guess. So hopefully that happens. So can you guys believe this is the third take on this video? That's right, the third time. You think I'd be good by now after making all the videos I've had? So I made this video. I made a video for this on last Sunday outside of the picnic table. It was a little bit windy and I thought, well, it won't be too bad, but on the playback of the video, you couldn't even hear me with the wind. So I thought, great. So I redid it uh, last night when I got home in the shed here. I'm in the woodshed, by the way. And everything was perfect. Went really well. And then I played it back. I downloaded it, played it back this morning. And my head was cut off. So I was standing up like this. I wasn't sitting down, I should have been sitting down maybe, so half my head's gone. So this is the third time, hopefully it, hopefully it's okay this time. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of work making videos, but I enjoy it. So three times the charm, I guess, or third time's the charm, or whatever they say. So guys, uh, 
I've got something new going on in my videos. Since the wood cutting season is pretty much a wrap in the splitting videos and the wood cutting videos and the wood hauling, skidding videos that pretty much come to an end for this season. Maybe some of you guys will be happy, maybe some of you guys will miss them. So, I'm going to start a new uh, thing. It's going to be called uh, Woodshed Ramblings with Logger John. That's Woodshed Ramblings with Logger John. I'm just going to hang out here in the woodshed. Since there's hardly any wood left in it, there's a little bit piled behind me. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to have to put a little bit more in tonight. Maybe a couple wheelbarrow loads because it's going to be cold later this week and I only have a little bit left maybe two wheelbar loads left this whole shed was full back in September when I filled it up now it's a storage for bicycles I have the barbecue in here and I have a little bit of wood but I'm just going to sit here and we're just going to have I'm going to pick different topics to talk about and my next video after my chainsaw review video I am going to do a question and answer session with uh, Logger John. So I got some pre-questions made up and I'm just going to answer them and hopefully you'll enjoy that. Find out a little bit more about Logger John and you'll be happy to know I don't, I don't just spend my whole time cutting wood. I do other things. So that'll be Questions and answers with Logger John and the Woodshed Ramblings. So stay tuned for that. But first you can watch the Chainsaw... What is it? I forget the number. 261 Pro uh, review. Hope you like it. Um, yeah. So stay tuned guys.